Good afternoon everyone. This is Atia from Atia's Treasures. Today I will be making a baby blanket on my Viking sewing machine. It's for a friend of mine who just recently had a grandbaby and I offered to make her a baby blanket. So this is the fabrics that I'm using. I have a pink uh, minky fabric, minky dot fabric. So I'm going to embroider on this fabric. And the back side would be this flannel elephant fabric. Also, this is the design. It's a cute little elephant with a bow. The girl's name is Layla. And this is the fabric. It's an applique design. So this is the fabric I have for the elephant. And on the back side, I'm fusing some heat and bond. And this glitter um, canvas vinyl I'm going to use for the hair bow. I will be using my magnetic hoop for my Viking Ruby Deluxe. It's a 180 by 30, which is the medium size, um, because this fabric is a fabric I wouldn't want to hoop. So this lets me float the design on top. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to, again, go over all the supplies that I'm going to use for this applique. Again, here's the design. It's a cute baby elephant girl. I have this gray fabric that I'm going to use for the body of the elephant and I have heat and bind on the back that's why it looks glossy remember to take off the paper backing before you start uh, start your embroidery and I'm going to use this pink polka dot fabric for the elephant's feet again heat and bind is on the back of this and I'm going to use this gray uh, glitter pink glitter vinyl uh, it's like a vinyl canvas. I'm not going to put heat and bind on the back of this. This is going to be for the hair bow. And I also have a piece of wash away stabilizer, a water soluble stabilizer that I'm going to use for the name. So the fibers, the threads don't sink into the minky fabric. And here's the threads I have all picked out. Um, this is the black for the eyes, the white for the eyes. I'm going to use this pink for the name. I'm going to use this pink for the hair bow. And I have this turquoise fab uh, thread for the feet. Okay, now I have the design on the screen. I have the fabric in the magnetic hoop. These are the magnets to hold it down. I slid a piece of cutaway stabilizer underneath the hoop. I didn't hoop it. Um... And I also have the gray fabric, which is going to be the tack down stitch and the outline stitch of the elephant already on the thread stand. And I also will be using a piece of water soluble stabilizer when I get to the name. That way the threads don't shrink into the um, fiber of the minky fabric. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to start to stitch out this design. So the first part of the design is this tack down stitch. So I'm going to hit start. And it's telling me to cut my thread. Okay, so I cut the thread and I'm going to hit start again. Okay, so now I'm going to place the fabric down and then it's going to do another um, tack down of the fabric. This is just a placement stitch. So you can see that. So now it's telling me to put the fabric down, which I'm going to grab this gray fabric. 
This piece probably a little too big. I'm gonna slide this under here. Oh, let me cut this thread first. Okay. Let me slide this under. And this reprint doesn't really have a direction, so. Okay. All right, and now it's going to do another, it's going to tack the fabric down now. I'm going to hit start again. And it's telling me to cut the thread. Okay, and I'm going to hit start again. probably can't see the thread, the gray thread on top of the gray. I like to use the same um, color thread for the tack down stitches and the satin stitches and the placement stitch as the fabric. That way nothing will show through. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off the hoop. I'm going to trim the fabric all around the elephant and then put it back on the hoop. And then it's going to do the zigzag stitch around. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I trimmed everything around the elephant. And now I'm going to hit start and it's going to do the zigzag stitch around the elephant. Okay, so now I have to cut the thread. Sorry, I had to grab my scissors. I need some sharper scissors, guys. Okay, I'm gonna hit start. to do the second stitch. And it's telling me to cut the thread again, but I'm not going to cut because I'm using the same thread. on this one that was supposed to be the elephant's feet in turquoise but you know what I'm gonna keep on going and 
again, it's going to tell me to cut the thread. I don't think it'll matter too much that he don't have turquoise feet. Okay. I think I actually like it more with the feet being you know, the same color. That's the one good thing about embroidery that you can change the colors the way you like or according to your customer's um, preference. Alright, so we're going to let the rest of the outline stitch out and I'll get back to you in the cover. stop it because I don't know why the thread I'm carrying here. Hmm. That's weird. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to start this over. I'm going to start. Okay, so I'm going to let this finish doing the satin stitch and I will come back when it's done to show you. Okay, so now it is finished all of the satin stitch around the elephant. And the next thing it's telling me to do is to, um, it's going to lay down a circle stitch uh, for the elephant's inside of his feet or her feet. Okay, so now... I'm going to hit start and I should do the circle outline for the placement of the pink fabric. Alright, it's going to tell me to cut the thread, but I'm just going to hit start. And the reason why I have to cut my thread at the beginning, because there is a feature in here where I don't have to do that on this machine, which I like. It's a cutter. But I just noticed that sometimes with letters, it stitches better when I turn the auto cutter off. So I don't mind the extra step of cutting the thread at the beginning instead of letting the cutter cut. Um, I don't know, just easier. I have replaced the cutters. You can replace the cutters. In this machine this is the Viking Ruby deluxe that I have you can replace the cutters in here um, really easy the cutter is about maybe seven dollars um, I just prefer just to turn them off so now it's gonna tell me to place the fabric for the little circles of the feet so I'm gonna cut this but I'm gonna use the same thread like I said I like to use the same 
color thread that's in the um, design. That we don't have to keep changing colors over and over and over again. And what is next? Next it's for me to place the fabric. So I have this pink polka dot fabric. I'm going to place that down. That should definitely cover. And I'm going to hit start. And again, it's going to tell me to cut the thread. And hit start. to trim the fabric away the excess fabric away and the one cool feature about this machine it has an actual trim feature where it actually pulls the um, the hoop towards me Let's see. so you can hit trim position and it actually brings the hoop towards me and I really really like that feature So now that is finished. Oh, that's so cute. It's just coming along so good. So, next is the white of the eyes. So I'm going to have to change this thread out again. And I cut my thread from the top. And I pull it from the needle area like this. I know it's just something I was always taught to, not to floss it back through the tension disc. So I go that way. Okay, now I'm gonna put white on. I'm gonna do the white of the eyes. I'm gonna hit start and it's gonna jump. And it's gonna tell me to cut the thread in a minute. So these long jump stitches. Wow. Okay. Let me hit start again. Okay, so the white is done. Now, this wants me to do the black part of the eyes. So what is next? I believe on my screen. I believe the bow is next. So I'm going to switch back to this pink thread. I believe this is the one I had. Yeah. What was it this one? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna use this pink. I'm going to use this pink also for the name. I think that should pop.
Next is going to do, I believe, the bow. Yep. Alright. So I'm going to trim the threads. And here's start. glitter vinyl so I'm going to use just a little piece and cut that oh that's going to be adorable okay I'm going to start and I'm going to cut So I think next is okay. Next is the name. <laughs> so let me put this out of here. Okay, so far this has come along really, really good. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to hit start.
I love that sale. Okay, so the design is done. All I have to do is cut this. Okay, this off. This was so old. I should have actually used a fresher piece. <laughs> it was like, oh my goodness. Really old. But hey, it worked. And trim up some of these. Got little jump stitches here. This came out so cute. Oh, look at that. I'm going to trim these up here. Alright, so I'm going to take it off of the machine. I'm going to take it over to the next table. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when I take it off the hoop. All right, be back. Okay, guys, I took the design out of the hoop, took the magnets off, and this is the back. So now I'm going to, I see my stabilizer got stuck. And I could just use a spray adhesive. But I chose not to. So I'm going to cut this away. Now, being as though they're not wearing this item, I'm not going to put Tinder Touch on the back of this because it's basically a blanket. And then they won't. They're not wearing it against their skin. They won't wear this part against their skin, so it doesn't have to be smooth. So that saves me some tender touch. Make sure I don't cut the minky. Okay. So when I cut some of these jump threads, I don't think it's really necessary to cut these. I think you gotta be careful with some of them because some of them will make the design unravel. And the tension looks good. Okay. And here it is. I'm glad you guys joined me today. I really appreciate it. If you guys can hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, it would be greatly appreciated. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.